All right. Thank you all for coming out to the 100th episode of the Danny Brown Show. Before we get started, we're going to show a quick video. Two years ago, we shot a test episode that we have never aired, and we thought it'd be fun to show some highlights from that tonight. We will start the show shortly after that, so thank you. So, I mean, we don't have an intro yet, but you want to just start this like it's a regular show? Yeah, that's cool. I will tell you one of my favorite shows on YouTube. It's actually an ongoing show. It's called Mace Wars. Mace Wars. We got these live streamers that just walk around L.A., and they just mace each other. <laughs> 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 Watching Cyrax, that's been pretty much my, my, my main guy right there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Holy shit, man. This guy looks rough. I <laughs> He's great, look. <laughs> Yo, what are you watching, dog? As you guys can see, I, I definitely have a lot of hobbies. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of hobbies. We, we barbecue well. I burnt up every goddamn thing. I ain't barbecue shit. I just fucked up the ribs. You know what I'm saying? Invited everybody over to fucking burn the ribs. That's only me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I felt, I was so mad at myself. Did you guys eat them anyway? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, white people just was being nice. <laughs> if my niggas was in there, they'd be like, man, you fucked up the ribs. You know what I'm saying? Have you tried that, uh, that Delta 8 out here? That seemed like some crackhead shit to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just don't got the heart to be just sitting there like, let me get that OG Kush Delta 8 from out the liquor store. I know that got to be fucked up. Now you talk to a nigga, you smoke that shit, he be having system error drops and everything, man. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Danny, what's some weird white people shit you've seen lately? Um, the, the, the casserole game. The casserole game? Yeah, because we'll I went over there and it was a casserole buffet. It was like every type of casserole you can think of. Tuna casserole, chicken casserole, green bean casserole, <laughs> spinach casserole. <laughs> Black people don't fuck with casseroles? I, not that I know of. I ain't never pulled up to no function, to no Thanksgiving function, and it was casseroles everywhere. Like the other day, my girl made some lasagna. But for some reason, she put carrots in this shit. I could just feel her staring at me. You know what I'm saying? When I'm taking a bite, and she's just looking at me. And I'm just trying my best to like just keep a straight face and be like... But then I couldn't help it. I'm like, you put carrots in this shit? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Julia from Michigan. Hey, shots out Michigan. But been living in Montana. Wow, how does that happen? <laughs> that just seems like a real lawless type of place to just escape to. Yeah, Tuna Mac's amazing, but I just ate that so much in jail. That now I'm being in a free world. It's like, man, what am I doing? I can't be eating Tuna Mac out here, man. I just feel like I'm going to catch a case. Like when I was locked up, they like, if you don't never want to come back, there's just two things you got to do. Never eat Tuna Mac and, and stay in the house at the 10 p.m. You know what I'm saying? Danny, what are your new songs you're working on? Yeah, the new songs I've been recording for the album, it was definitely needed, I would say. I feel like this album was getting a little too sad. So I'm, so I'm able to put some color into it now, which is gonna be cool, you know what I'm saying? So the other night I was on Twitch and then beautiful, wonderful Adriana Chechik was on there and it was one of the best streams I've ever seen in my life. So I want to shout her out. Oh know. shit, that's the wrong one. <laughs> 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 I'm living a great life. Love you guys, peace, have a good one. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready to get the show started? All right, ready in five, four, three, two. It's the Danny Brown Show. Sit back, relax, you already know why you make studios. It's the Danny Brown Show. We about to get live. Let's go. It's the Danny Brown Show. Sit back, relax, you already know why you make studios. It's the Danny Brown Show. We about to get live. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. What's, what's up, that? dog? Welcome to the Danny Brown Show here in beautiful Austin, Texas. We got the creek in the cave. I always say it wrong. Is the cave in the creek? The creek in the cave? Creek in the cave. Okay, I'm sorry. I love you guys. Thanks for having us. I got my boy right here, Hannibal Burris. What's happening, y'all? Hey. Yeah, man. Thank you for pulling up, man. How was it getting in here? For sure, it was smooth, man. It was smooth. I flew in last night. Oh, okay. Flew in last night. Got in at midnight. Didn't even go out. Went to bed. I'm, I'm getting old, man. I'm a professional now. Yeah, man. Yeah, I just, you know, I like a good matinee. Thank you all for coming through last minute. So, I like a good, a good 2 p.m. show, man. 
People yeah, can I go mean, do other stuff if they want. They can call it a day if they are if they get too high or drunk here. They can just say I'm done. They can go to some shit at seven o'clock or whatever. They could watch four shows here at the creek and whatever's going on. They could do whatever, man. This shit is great. I mean, starting off, you know, two PM, man, getting day drunk. It's a good it's a good Saturday today. You know, yeah. the weather's been nice, you know, it's been warming up here in Texas, man. I've I've been here for almost three years now. And um <laughs> I mean, at first it was hard. I will say, at first it was hard getting used to this weather. I mean, coming from Detroit, obviously, you know, it's, it's cold as fuck there now I'm here. But I didn't know, man, that it got so hot that it can burn a black man, you know? Yeah. I would go out, like, for my morning jogs and shit. It's already, like, 90 fucking degrees, not wearing no fucking, you know, wearing a tank top or some shit. I come back, I'm like, fuck, I'm burnt. I didn't even know niggas had to wear suntan. We supposed to. We supposed to wear it, but I never, I never wore it, so I'ma just deal with the consequences. But I never see an old wrinkly, like, you know, sometimes you see old white folks and you're like, hmm, you should have wore it. Oh yeah, like in Florida? <laughs> you go in Florida, the motherfuckers just be like, all this like orange, just yeah. like burnt and it just shit just look like they've been fucking getting, they look like, they, like they came out the air fryer or some shit. <laughs> but yeah, this is the 100th episode, man. I'm so grateful to be doing this. Congratulations, man. Yeah, man, you know, with the Danny Brown show, you have seen my ups and I had some downs, you know? I used to be showing up getting drunk as fuck, just getting up there talking shit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I think it really did help me to be like, oh, nigga, you need some help. Because um, Doing the podcast. Yeah, because I got to see myself back and I'll be uh, like, oh, shit. Do you know how many times I've done the fucking show and I've said some crazy shit? No, I don't even know. I just be drunk. I come back blacked out, go to sleep and shit. Next Tuesday, that fucking chicken. Like, I said that and just feel so fucking embarrassed and shit, man. Then it was like, oh, nigga, you need some help. And then just seeing yourself back drunk and shit, it's never cool. It's not, dog. You feel cool when you're doing it. You're like, yeah, I'm the motherfucking man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, it's, not, it's, it's tough, man, because I had, you know, I got arrested. It was a bullshit arrest, but I was faded. And, it, and then, it was, a, it was a, but then it was the body cam footage. Oh yeah, I do remember that shit. Nah. <laughs> so what it's, was that night like, what, what, what happened? What happened? It, it, so it was Miami, uh, it was Art Basel, yeah. and I was, I was solo, I was kind of faded. I see a police officer, it's, my phone is dead, so I walk up to the cop, I say, hey, uh, call me Uber, I'll give you $20. <laughs> No way. No, you didn't, man. Yeah, I said, call me Uber. I'll give you $20. He said, nah. <laughs> and I guess he a Lyft guy. Whatever it is, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I walk off, and then I look back, and the cop, it's, it's girls coming out the club, and he kissing girls. And she, she was hella unprofessional. So I'm just talking shit. I said, hey, you out here kissing motherfuckers? You can't call me an Uber? <laughs> <laughs> and he, saw, he we started talking back and forth. Fuck you, get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. And so then he tell me to leave. And then I go into the bar, like around the corner, and he follows me into the bar. Oh, shit. Because I was going there to charge my phone. He follows me into the bar. You can't be in here. Like, where do you, you just told me to leave and I left. Now you just, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was a multiple choice on where I could go. <laughs> you left it open ended on where I could go. And so then he tells me to leave the bar. And so now I'm mad at it. So he following me out of the bar and I'm walking back. And that's when he started the footage. He don't start the footage of like, I'm about to follow this motherfucker even though this confrontation is over. <laughs> he started, like, he following me and I'm walking backwards. And, uh, and I started talking, he's like, I started talking to the camera. That's what really got me arrested. <laughs> As I started playing the camera instead of him, I was like, yo, what's up? It's me, Hannibal Burris. <laughs> This cop, stupid as fuck. He was like, it's not a crime, but it did annoy him. And he said, put your hands behind your back. And I said, what, what am I arrested for? He was like, uh, don't worry about it. Put your hands behind your back. And so, but then I was snapping out. So I was like, so seeing myself in that, I was like, oh, that was, yeah. I was pretty faded. Even, the whole shit was avoidable. Case got dropped. But it was like, oh, I don't like, I don't like that. That was, that was, I was kind of, I wish I had like six less drinks. Hanging that fucking that Art Basel, man. That's one thing about Hannibal. I've, I'd say we met maybe 10 years ago. Yeah, I think 2013-ish yeah. or something yeah, like that. I will, yeah, um, I think we met at, was it Bonnaroo? It was some festival. I don't even but know. But Hannibal, 
that's why this is my boy right here, man. We've been hanging ever since, man. But I, first time I met him, I was like a super fan out already. I probably was drunk as hell, getting on his nerve. But I would have shows and shit, you know, just periodically or whatever. And Hannibal would always just pop up. He'd be in the dressing room before me. I'd be like, motherfucker, you here? <laughs> and then we'd just always go party and shit, man. So this has been my boy. So I'm so happy to have him here, man, doing this with me, man. I couldn't ask for a better fucking... You, you co-hosting today. You just ain't, hey, ain't even no guest. I'm down. For sure, you know, man. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing up here, man. I'm just you got this shit, man. It's just you just you, just, you, just, you do the stuff and then you say some stuff and then body to buy, everybody go. I know it's the craziest shit. Like, you know, say the stuff, say the stuff, better back, have fun, be the back, be the back. That's why I respect comedians so much because you know doing music. You know, you get on stage, you got music and shit. You just hit yeah. some dance moves and shit. Crowd goes wild. Yeah. You're doing comedy. It's just like you on stage. You fucking. You just got a mic, and it's like, oh shit, you got to figure this shit out. And and when you bombing, mm -hmm. that's just like the worst shit ever. You know what I'm saying? Like you can just hear a fucking pin drop. Like now, you know. Yeah. Like I don't know what's going on. You know. <laughs> you just got get in that fight or flight mode, man. Yeah, that's why I don't like doing uh, comedy as much. I still will do it. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I enjoy doing music more just because even if the sometimes crowd members start talking too much and I just be like, drop the beat. Yeah. I don't even want to think of nothing clever to say to you. Just uh, uh, play the drums on this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man, you've been you've been getting into the music shit heavy, man. Been dropping some crazy shit, man. Yeah. So, I mean, would you? What's the difference you would say? Like, what is the real main difference between comedy and rap? Like, on the. Uh, on what side? Because it's the creation side and there's the live side. That's the funner side to me, like being able just to be in the studio and you know you make some crazy shit and you be like, oh, this is shit, yeah. it's about to kill them. You know, I love that part of creation more. And then when yeah. you finally on stage with it mm -hmm. and they going crazy for the shit, you're like, oh shit, I was right. You know, it make you feel like, you know, that's the payoff for the whole yeah. shit. With comedy, it's like you come up with a joke and shit and you go out there and you're like, oh, maybe this shit wasn't that funny, you know? Yeah. I think as far as the creation of it, the thing with music is, yeah, you, you're able to enjoy your own stuff for a while and just kind of, you can, you, you, you can make it for yourself. Where comedy is, is more audience centric. And you can enjoy yourself on stage, but maybe if you, you know, when you're developing a joke, those first few times where you're getting it to where it is, man, and, then, and it, then it's fun. But then if you torn it, you can kind of get stale with it. But music, just when you, when you make a song you're really excited about it, you play that shit a hundred times mm -hmm. and you can really enjoy it. But I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy my stand-up in the same way. I'm not watching it over and over. Maybe yeah. a riff moment, but I, if it was off the cuff and I enjoy it, but the music, if it's catchy, you, you can really live it in, in, a, in a different way. Like, I, I, think I, I never be... bump my stand-up in the car. Yeah, you know? that would be super weird, you know? <laughs> you hang out with a comedian or something, he just throw his joke on, like, watch this bit right here. Yeah. <laughs> this shit crazy, son. <laughs> I'd be like, nigga, you're a fucking weirdo, man. But so do you think that, you know, since you've been, you know, writing jokes and being good at comedy, do you think yeah. it made writing raps that much more easier? I think it definitely makes the writing, yeah, it makes it easier. I think it, uh, as, far, as far as just having point of view and, and having things be interesting, because I've already done it. That's mm -hmm. the thing, too. I've, I've worked without beats before. So then it's just really, you know, when I do have great production, it's just about doing justice to it, you know what I mean? And, and making sure that I'm saying some shit that's worthy of, of, of a dope beat. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, I've been having a lot of fun with it, man. I think too, because I've been adjacent to it since the beginning of my career, I hosted a lot of music events or was in people's videos or did skits or it made, you know, fun songs. And so now to really be in it in a different way, um, it's been cool. And now that I've, you know, been doing both, they help each other. On the, on the performance side, just because the music, if people don't know the songs, you kind of have to really, really sell them, like sell mm -hmm. each moment, you know what I mean? And just be more expressive. So they, they, they both kind of really have been helping each other. And when I do the shows with both, it's been, it's been cool. It's, it's sometimes though, some motherfuckers, uh, you know, I'll do the, I'll book the stand, I'll book it as a Hannibal S.G. Tune show. And then, uh, I'll do the stand up first, <laughs> and then the band will pop out, and then sometime motherfuckers be leaving during the music shit. Yeah. I'm like, I, got, <laughs> I'm I'm like, I got a whole band up here, goddamn y'all. <laughs> y'all bouncing, what the fuck? I got a whole. But then I feel weird if I brought if I did the music first and then did the stand up because yeah, energetically. So I've been, you know, now I'm I'm holding off on doing some music sets before 
I'm, I'm really gonna get shit popping and drop more visuals and, and get a and get an energy around it. But it's been it's been real cool, man. Cause I've been wanting to do it for a minute, and and now it's kind of getting a good feel for it. It's coming together, and it's I like the communal aspect of it, of of you know being in the studio or working with the band, and mm-hmm. not just being lone wolf, just talking talking shit by myself, and 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 the collaboration has been dope. So it's been a, it's been a real cool time. Hell yeah, man. I'm happy to have you, brother. It's been fun working with your ass, man. All right, yeah. we'll jump into some of these, um... We'll jump into some of these Axe Dannys. We got some videos? Sure do. Axe Danny! Hi, Danny. I have a question for you. Our total wash LUT is broken right now. So, these days, I've been taking a shit and then going straight into the shower right after. Is that totally disgusting, or is that something you would do? Yeah, Danny, congrats on your 100th episode. Is that the most vile thing you've ever heard? We're talking about no wiping, just shit, walk over into the shower. Do you think that's normal or not disgusting? Thanks. That's some white people shit. I mean, no, I don't... <laughs> But no, I would think that's the most hygienic way to go about it. You I know? think... I think it's yeah, you 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 know, if you got especially if you got great water pressure, uh yeah. And the shit shit isn't transparent, so it's really easy to track if you got it all down. Like all the shit is gone and then you keep, you know, rinsing and you're like, okay, no more shit colored water. I'm clean. I'm, I'm a clean. do wipes kind of guy. You know, I gotta get the wipes done, man. I can't really yeah. it's 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 they get real messy back there, man. I mean, um, because toilet paper is nasty when you really think about it, man. It's, soup, just, it's wrong. It's, you're just it's smashing wrong. shit up your ass. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a wrong. It's a, it's a, it's a bad solution with great marketing. <laughs> <laughs> you just be in that situation where you just keep wiping and wiping yeah. and wiping. You're like, damn, nigga, you ain't done yet. And you just nah. keep going and going and going. Nah. So yeah. Ever since yeah. I've been on the do wipes train, they I, not sponsored by the way, man, but I would love to um, <laughs> holler at the do wipes guys, man, because I really they got they starting to make great like um they making different flavors of them motherfuckers. I don't know if you call flavors. them flavors. <laughs> yeah, you know they got like a a, a tea tree aloe, you know, <laughs> you know a spearmint, you know peppermint smell, you know keep that booty tingly. <laughs> the eighty two game preseason is in the books, and it's time for the real season. Don't miss out on any NBA playoff action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. From the play-in tournament through the finals, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, eye boosts, and so much more. You know it's nothing more than I love than watching the NBA, having all my homies over, having a great time. Who doesn't love basketball, man? I'm a huge Piston fan, man, so I like to root for my boys even when I'm not being able to watch them. Rooting for my favorite players and everything, man. There's nothing better, man, than have a great time with my friends, man, and root for my favorite players. Being able to make some money while doing it, so why not? Go ahead. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Danny B. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Danny B. New customers bet $5 and get 200 in instant bonus bets instantly. New customers bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. That's code Danny B. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. All right, let's go to the next one. Congrats on like- 100th episode, Danny. Hey, Danny, congrats on 100th episode. My question is, if you had to make a rap song with one person from YMH, who would it be? God damn, none of you motherfuckers. Man. Think about it. Because uh, <laughs> I don't think it would work out. But I guess if anybody, it would probably be Christina, because she's done it before. The main mommy has already had, you know, she already had some... She did a nice little song with Creation, so I think probably her. Oh, she got a track with Creation? Yeah, it was yeah. dope. It was fun. Okay. It was for the What about Dr. Shit. Drew? That'd be good balance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would. Dr. Drew, I just wouldn't want to do the video with his ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and then you know it's it's one thing I, I really feel like Dr. Drew would be like one of those you know those white rappers that just rap fast as hell like Eminem and don't be saying shit <laughs> like Dr. Drew busts out the white man flow on you like Ugh, like <laughs> just go Tom McDonald on you and start talking about vaccines and shit man I ain't got time for that man I'm trying to stay politically free with my music you know uh-huh. but yeah man is there anybody you want to work with who I want to work with? Uh, not not the mommies. I'm just saying in general, like music wise. 
Stevie Wonder. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, that, that's just too, yeah, that would be crazy. Stevie Wonder ain't fucking with nobody right now. He mad motherfuckers keep saying he can see and shit. He like, motherfuckers, <laughs> I done built this brand for this long for you motherfuckers to try to come with these theories. <laughs> Wouldn't that be some crazy shit if that motherfucker just actually just pulled his glasses up and you just see like some beautiful eyes and shit? Like, <laughs> I think, man, you know what? Like, I don't want to be blind, but if I, I think it's definitely some benefits to it because you can't get manipulated by somebody like having a nice shirt. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, how's your spirit though? I, I don't remember, care about your car. Do you stank? That's yeah, all. Yeah. If you stank, I don't want to be around you. If your voice sound weird, I don't want to be around you. If you speak in a weird fidgety cadence, I don't want to be around you. Like he not manipulated by the the eye, like just different things. Oh, okay. He not. You know, you ain't got to worry about having. He ain't gonna roast your haircut or nothing. He's just like, he's just like your voice sound weird today. I remember one okay. time when I was like trying to like go around in you know early rap days and shit, and I was just like trying to figure it out, and um, I ended up meeting these guys that was in L.A., and they were actually um, Stevie Wonder nephews. Okay. And um, I went out to L.A. You know they had like a studio and shit, and I was they were staying at like one of his old houses or some shit. It was like an old ass Royce Royce in the fucking um, garage and shit, and then I went. I had never been in like a mansion before. Like it was a crazy ass big ass house, and I went in there and shit. And this motherfucker was trash everywhere. It was fucking disgusting. It was just like some, like, they, they was just really taking advantage of him type shit. It was just all fucked up. And I was like, if Stevie was around to see this shit, <laughs> it would, <laughs> it would put you motherfuckers out right now. Like, I can't believe y'all doing this to my boy like this, man. But see, yeah, that's nice to not be bothered by that shit. Like, you know. It was Like, bad. only time you know something messy if somebody tripped over something. Like, did you just fall? It's messy in here. No, it was fucked up. You could just tell that they was really just like neglecting the property type shit. Like that's why I never want to be like so fucking rich where you can have your fucking nephews fucking trash in one of your old mansions and shit. Like, and you don't know nothing about it. Like, I think the house cool. You know what I'm saying? They over there holding it down. <laughs> Grass wasn't cut. Windows was dirty as fuck. I'm like, we supposed to record in here? You know? Damn, so that sound like my family. <laughs> <laughs> I got that exact situation with one of my places. They, they live next to it. They ain't cut the... Eh, whatever, man. Yeah. It's not about that. It's not what we're here for. All right. We're going we're gonna to jump into some audience questions, man. Anybody in the audience got a question, man? Come on, motherfuckers. Don't get shy. Audience. Help me out. <laughs> right here. Right here. Like, we're sending the, the mic, mic. We're going to bring the mic. Hey, uh, how do you feel about uh, Red Bar making the block hot to where Steve-O had to apologize for you on that video game shit? Who's Red Bar? Uh, never mind. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Red <So> Bar's <laughs> watching. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Steve-O, um, you know, just being a fan of Jackass and shit, you know, and just, you know, it was great to have him come through and kick it with me or whatever, but, yeah, he's, a, he's been a bit of an asshole. But I, I don't know, you know, when you... um. <laughs> When you're doing this podcast shit, man, and sometimes, you know, especially when you was, he was running around doing the rounds and you're doing so many fucking podcasts and shit, you know, sometimes you just be a little aggy, man. He might be like one of those dry drunks, you know? He was kind of a bitch to me in person, and then he apologized like five seconds later. Maybe that might be his defense mechanism, you know? He like, I'm just be a dick to people and apologize out there. You don't want to whoop Steve O' ass. You know he can take the pain, so it's like... <laughs> It ain't no use for me to try to fucking fuck him up or nothing. Nah, man, Steve-O Steve should have known you rapped, man. That was a weird clip where he was like, what do you do on stage? Yeah. I, was, I was like, what? You could have just looked at, real quick. That's not even, you don't even got to, you could just Google. You don't even have to click nothing to find that out. <laughs> That's just surface level. If you just search and you're like, okay, he raps. Let me, all right, I'm about to step in here. That was fucking crazy, him not knowing that you rap. Yeah. See, come on, he was like, okay, this guy raps. He didn't have to listen to no songs to like, that's 0.3 seconds of research. I wouldn't me. think Steve-O listened to my music or nothing like that. He, he don't have to listen. I don't, you know, I don't listen to Liz Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess you're right. <laughs> but I know she make music. The crazy shit about Steve-O when he went, got butt naked and went up on stage with Wu-Tang. <laughs> <laughs> and then Raekwon pulled his ass back out like apologize to the family 
So he's been through a lot, man. Like, I remember that fucking Steve-O documentary. He was fucking huffing and fucking doing all type of fucking crazy shit, man. So he's been through a lot, man. I really wanted to talk to him because, you know me, I'm almost a year sober now. So yeah. just to see somebody that's been, you know, he's been holding it down, you know? And I, I, I really wanted to talk to him about that shit, but I see I couldn't, I couldn't right. get nowhere with him. Does your sobriety include or exclude whippets? I never really was a big Whippet fan, man. Like oh. I, I like I like the hard shit. That was like some, you know, that was like teenage shit to me, man. You just woom, woom, woom. Just get that little feeling and shit. So I never. It's one of those things. If I'm somewhere and they got them, you know, I do them. But that's nothing. I never seeked out. You know. Yeah. Black Black folks in London is in the Whippets. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I was just there. I mean, I think they cracking down on it kind of hard. But I, you know, just walking around through shortage and shit. It was just Whippet fucking carts, just every fucking yeah. where on the street. Like it was crazy. But I guess Whippets. Then I looked it up. Whippets is not even that bad for you. As far really? as as far as if meth is ten, Whippets is like one point eight. <laughs> it's but not too like, crazy. Wouldn't I give you like some type of like brain something like? Cause I've I've been around um, motherfuckers doing whippers and shit. Do your own research, also. <laughs> you know, I did mine and it didn't seem that bad. But also, don't do whippers because of this. Do your own research and decide. I'm just a guy. Cause you ever been around somebody that like do a shit ton of whippers and they just go into like a slow mode? You know that part is scary. Yeah. They be like, yeah, we kicking it with raw, 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 raw. You like, damn, nigga, anything that make me do that, I don't want to. I don't want to be involved. I thought it, I, oh, I'm trying to remember my whippet when I did, when I was like 18 or something. Damn, damn that was, that was 23 years ago. Whippets is like real shit. juggalo gathering fest to me type shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, woo woo, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I just, it's never really been my thing, man. I just, I don't know. I, okay. It's, it's, so you like whippets? You I, ask me. Uh, no, I have, no, it's not. I don't, it's not a part of my life like that, but if, if somebody asked me later, I would be like, no, I walk away, and then be like, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like one of those things, like if you drunk, you'll do anything kind of shit, so it's like, let me try it out, but yeah, I've been around people, they be having the motherfucking tanks and shit, you know, and they want to hit that shit. Ain't that like a big, what, what is that one band that go everywhere, motherfuckers travel with tanks and shit? Fish, yeah, the fish oh. motherfuckers, man. They travel with, they travel with tanks of. No, it's like um, it's like a a selling hub for them, like motherfuckers that really you know deal in that world. Mm -hmm. They just travel to fish. I seen a documentary, so don't don't don't, <laughs> don't quote me on it. But they 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 travel with their tanks to every fish concert, and they be having the tanks in the parking lot, like yo balloons on sale. Like we got got them on. Let's imagine being one of them niggas that sell balloons and shit, like. Like you want to whip it, like you know, it ain't like selling crack or weed. Or like you out here selling whippets, man. It's that clientele is way different, man. Like <laughs> motherfuckers with jinkos on and shit. You know, <laughs> like it, anytime you dealing with motherfuckers like that, it's gonna get a little sketchy, man. Imagine a motherfucker robbing you for your tank. <laughs> like, pull up on you with a machete or some shit. Run, run your whippets, fool! Like goddamn, man. That shit is horrifying, man. And then they just walk away, walk away slow. Cause yeah, that shit walk away as fuck. holding the tank, like looking back. Don't do shit. You're just gone. It's over with. That's, it's over with. This is not something I'm trying to get involved in. We got another question. So, oh, oh so, uh, um, just being terminally online and just you know just. Been on, been on your computer too much. Wait, you what know, did he ask? How the YouTube algorithm works, you fucking... Um, he asked, how did I get into low-cow shit? Now, we can keep it over here to get, get, get him next, and we'll just... Um, but yeah, I mean, I just... Being on the um, computer... Wait, so what much, is low-cow? It's these... I mean, it's pretty much a, a, a crazy motherfucker that lives their life online, and they do fucked up shit, and we just watch them, man. It's just... it's it's We love it, man. To be honest, I've been... Um, Right now, I've been more on King Cobra ever since he finally ended his dry spell, and it's been it's been a it's been a wild ride. I've been watching King Cobra for about four years, I want to say, but I, I think it was more so just being a drunk piece of shit and and then watching YouTube and be like, I ain't this fucked up though, you know, make you try to feel better for yourself and shit. But 
I, I, I try to, the thing about it is, I, I know it's bad, and I, and I try to stay away from it and be like, I ain't, I'm, I'm chilling, I ain't gonna watch that shit, but it pulls me back every fucking time. <laughs> Whether it's cyber, but yeah, so, but yeah. Damn. I, I mean, I used to be all in the chat and shit. I used to really be involved in shit. And used to be like, <laughs> say, here's $20, do this shit. Trolling him up. I never, you, I mean, we, I, I, I have probably pitched in and sent King Cobra some liquor before, but... What ideas have you had them do on the live shit? Because that's what they... Uh, hey, here's $20 to go do this shit. Have you... What's um, the craziest one I would say that I was involved in was when Cyrax tried to disappear for the, from the internet. And we all hate when Cyrax is gone, so we missed him so much. And we just was like, oh, um, let's just say Cyrax died because we had a Discord and we would... So we just started making, like, rest in peace tributes to Cyrax and... Everybody be online and be like, oh, rest in peace, Cyrax, man. Gone but not forgotten. He was such a great guy and talking shit about it. Then next day, you know, he popped back up. Was like, I'm not dead, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Stop saying that. I'm not dead. I'm back. I'm here. I'm here. And then somebody just decided to be like, no, that's not the real Cyrax. That's an AI. <laughs> we can't believe they have AI-generated Cyrax. And then we went on with that for like a week. It was so fucking funny, man. It was great, man. All right, uh, next question. Hearing you talk about that corner of the internet make me feel like... You've been over my house and watching me. I, know, I showed you this shit. But even still, it's like, <laughs> it's so <laughs> foreign to me. I feel like my dad, when you talk... Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay, Cyrax. I'm yeah. not... <laughs> Cyrax, okay, Cyrax. Write that down. I'm not proud of it. I will say I'm not proud of it, but... <laughs> hey. Have you ever uh, thought about hosting your own fashion uh, show? Um, no, I, I don't, I mean, fashion is just like, you know, I like clothes and I like to wear clothes because you have to, you can't walk around butt ass naked, but. Well, why not? You're always stunting on Instagram, bro. I see your posts. I mean, but I feel like just being, that's like a snob thing. Like I dress so good. I can show you other <laughs> motherfuckers that can dress, you know, I just don't really got that much confidence in it. You know, I just like to wear what I like and shit like that. But no, nah, man, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to do that. That's, um. Uh, and, I'm not uh, that cool. Congratulations on uh, one year of sobriety, man. I know Thank it's you. It's, it's not a year yet. It'll be a year in April. You know, I'm, I'm, the clock is ticking. I hate to say it, you know, but it works, you know, take one day at a time. It's been harder days. It's been, you know, some easy days, but, you know, I'm, I'm still here, man, you know? Hell yeah. And you've seen me, Hannibal. You've seen me. I'm pretty fucked up a lot of times, man. I used to, it, it used to be so funny. I have this one song called Attack. And every time I would play it, I would be drunk because it'd be the last song. And I wouldn't know not one word from the motherfucker. And you know, if you rap like me, you kind of could get away with it because I'd just be up there like, <laughs> just saying random shit. <laughs> and every time I get on stage, Hannibal would be like, man, what the fuck, man? You don't know the lyrics? You don't know the. I'd be like, pissed off when you fuck up a tag. I'd be like, no. I'd be like, we ain't laughing at I'd be like, you need some help? God damn it, I know it. <laughs> I do, man, I do. I actually have a tour coming up soon, man, so please. If you haven't got your tickets yet, you know, I would love for you guys to come out and see me rap. It's, it's, it's fun, you know, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be here, you know, trying to, trying to hold it down, you know what I'm saying? So do you um, think like, um, you know, you, you, you dabbling, you fucking around with this rap shit, man. Mm -hmm. Do you ever just get like, man, I, I want to get to the point where I'm doing it full-fledged and like, fuck comedy? Or is it always just 50 50? Oh, no, 100%. As soon as one of these tracks pop off, <laughs> I'm canceling all my comedy dates, dog. This <laughs> is it, yeah, no. Nah, once it, And I'll do it, I'll still do comedy. I'll do it for fun, or you know what I mean? And, but I, just, I, I don't see myself really gigging, gigging. Like I, like I did in, you know, 2015, 16. I don't see that again, but I, I got three shows this month, that mm -hmm. type of thing. But I don't see myself really, nah, nah, nah. It'll, it'll, I'll incorporate, I'll do great banter at my music shows. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. My in-between shit's going to be really high level. <laughs> God damn it! But uh, yeah, I enjoy. It's just more fun. The shows are more fun, and the the level of preparation you could do, and the, the, like the visual aspect and the light. Like I like that that part of it. And my my comedy shows always incorporated that too with the visuals and the sound and DJ. I was you know moving towards that, but it's just I enjoy it more. I've been doing stand up since I was nineteen, man. So mm -hmm. forty one. So it's just. 
mixing it up and 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 shifting, dog. It's been it's been cool, man. It's been it's been a cool time. And these motherfuckers always trying to tell me you need to do comedy. You need to do. Comedy. I'm like, man, Hannibal, one of my closest friends. This motherfucker don't want to do it no more. Why the fuck would I try to? <laughs> like y'all got me fucked up. I'm I'm seeing the signs, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but if, if it's you know if it's something new, you know that's why the reason I did it was the the break in pandemic and, and and then trying to get back out into doing shows and I think just that part of it was just felt so weird of it going just from after especially after working on music and and being able to do your own shit and and figure out ideas without the audience being there just it really was intimidating after a while but now I'm I'm. My comedy show's in a good place. The music show is growing. I, I'm, I'm feeling dope as a as a performer, feeling in a, in a, in a good space. But th they both help each other, man. But that shit is, is a different, it's a whole different thing, man. Like the music, you can really prep it to a way where the stand up, you could do a, sh you could do a bit in the first show and then late show, mm -hmm. that shit is just not going. And you're yeah. like, what is going on? This shit just worked. In the same room, and like they like not with us. You stuttered. <laughs> you stuttered. You didn't segue it right. You didn't believe in it. I don't know. I, we didn't hear you. That lady was saying something behind me. I don't know what's going. On. It's, it's all these different factors that could that can affect how how the comedy going. But they is I'm I'm happy for it. The time and and all of that. But I enjoy all right, music more. Spin the motherfucking wheel. Thailand. You ever, you a traveling motherfucker? You ever been to Thailand? I have. What is it like? Out there? It, it, it seems like it stink or something, man. Cause... Uh, Bangkok stinks, like, cause of the, the hell of pollution. But uh, I went out there in 2018, actually, and I trained Muay Thai. I went out there because uh, Tag had just came out, and I didn't want to be in America during that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so when Tag premiered, I went to the premiere, did my contractual shit. And I said, let me get the fuck out of the country, let this shit die down or whatever. I don't want to be out of, in these streets while Tag is fresh. I didn't, I, <laughs> I didn't like the movie that much. But, uh, which is weird because some, it's some people's favorite movie. Yeah, no, Tag was dope to me. I don't know what you're talking know, about. Man. I like that shit. I think... <laughs> I think it might have just been uh, like my my view on it is based on my my mental space during the creation of it is is part of it. I don't I don't think I was in the greatest spot, but it's weird when people come up, and, hey man, I loved you in tag, and I had to make that split second decision <laughs> to whether say thank you, appreciate you, have a good one, or to say I hated that. You need better taste. <laughs> Because it depends on my mood. Sometimes I'm like, thank you. And sometimes I say, you need better taste in movies. It just depends. <laughs> I'm a wild card. <laughs> but uh, it, I went out to uh, Phuket and I trained Muay Thai. And that was dope because it was like I stayed at a camp and just woke up and, you know, did that shit twice a day sometimes. Went over to Chiang Mai, did the same thing. So it was, it was dope to just focus on that shit. And I went and watched a bunch of fights, which was, it was dope and also weird because the undercard would be... Six-year-olds fighting. Yeah. <laughs> now them little motherfuckers be going hard. And you're like, damn, they out here for real. And then, and then they just be sitting <laughs> watching the other fights. It, it was a, but it was a good time, man. Food was cheap. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a dope time over there. Yeah. That is funny shit about tag though, because I remember um, we did something in um, in um, somewhere in Texas. Was it in Texas? And we was um, we was leaving from it and um. It was a Sonic with a fucking volleyball. Oh, yeah. They was playing volleyball at the Sonic. I ain't never yeah. seen no shit like that. I'm like, only in Texas. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm, Hannibal was like, fuck it, man. I'm about to get out and play volleyball with these motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm looking at him like, what the fuck? You know, I was drinking, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tipsy. I'm like, what? Why are you about to do that? He's like, yeah. He's he like, sometimes you got to do shit for the story. I'm like, all right. <laughs> So this was, it was like a beach volleyball set up at, Who knew at Sonic, Sonic had beach volleyball? Yeah, that was crazy. All right, you got next game. <laughs> this motherfucker, there's like a whole bunch of college kids and shit. They all playing volleyball. Hannibal comes out. He jumps in the mix like, yo, I got next. <laughs> and everybody's just like, it's the guy from Tag. It's the guy from Tag. 
I, I forgot all about tagging shit. I'm like, oh shit. But then they started calling motherfuckers. More motherfuckers started showing up and shit. Like, oh shit. It was like, it was almost like the illest volleyball nigga at the Sonic had to pull up. He like, hold up. Hannibal up there playing? I'm on my way. <laughs> It's in! It's in! Let's go! Okay. This nigga show up, like, oh, next thing I know, he played like 10 games straight. I was like, man, let's get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> that shit was fun, man. <laughs> Who knew Sonic had beach volleyball? They need to do that at more of the places, dog. I'm a. I yeah. couldn't believe it, man. I was shocked. I was like, is this connected to the Sonic or is this yeah. a separate? No, it's Sonic Beach Volleyball. It was fun out there. I forgot what college that was we were, we were doing, but yeah, that was, that was no, a good that time, man. No, that was crazy, man. Who would ever think? I was cooking their ass in volleyball, too, yeah. if I remember right. No, you right. was. Yeah, I was getting them. <laughs> that shit turned to like a 90s movie or something. <laughs> like, I felt like, highway to the danger zone. This nigga spiking motherfucking kids and shit. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? Get me the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, have a good one. Yeah, you yeah, so All right, man. I'll be safe. Yeah. Some sweaty and shit. And I think we left and went to Whataburger or some shit. I'm like, man, that was crazy, man. He's like, yeah, man, you just got to do shit sometimes. I'm like, not volleyball at the Sonic, though. Nah, volleyball at the Sonic, you got to do it. Cause that's the thing. I ain't never been back to that town, and that's no. the last. I don't, I don't. I probably won't go back. It's a, you know, it's, it's a college town. I've aged out of that shit. Mm. So yeah, man, you gotta play volleyball. That's my lesson for you today. If you're a fucking Sonic, they got volleyball. You gotta get a game in real quick. But you could tell that was like they hang out. Like motherfuckers yeah. just go up there on a Friday night, get a cherry aids, do some spikes and shit. Like, that shit was dope, man. What is the, when that's the that's the fucking only entertainment you got in town. This motherfucker is fucked up, man. Dog, I was I was after that shit. I was researching. I was like, why aren't the other Sonics doing this? I, <laughs> I hit up the. <laughs> The Sonic is pretty. It's not the best fast yeah. food, man. I hit up the CEO on LinkedIn. I said, hey, man, y'all got something dope here. You need to expand on it. <laughs> you need more volleyball <laughs> at your restaurant so people can work off the terrible food. All right, we're jumping to some music questions, man. Um, so what's your top five favorite artists, groups, bands? Top five favorite artists. I know it's always hard just to narrow it down to five. No, Lupe Fiasco. Yeah, Chicago. Uh, Fonte from Little Brother. Fonte mm -hmm. is a dope artist. Uh, that's it. You just get to it. No. Fonte and Lupe? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me think. Who's my other? What am I? Uh, hmm. It's got it. It's got it. Quieter than I like in there, but I, but they just listening and shit. You know what I mean? That's that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be quiet. We got Fonte and Lupe. <laughs> <laughs> that's who you got. All right. So, uh, what song you want played at your funeral? Uh, I'm on the high. Highway to hell! <laughs> Highway to hell! You really think you're going to hell? Nah, I don't believe in hell. Uh. <laughs> so you don't believe in none of that shit? Uh, like? but, uh, uh, I want a medley played. I don't want just one song. I want like... Uh, <laughs> I don't think I want no music. Y'all motherfuckers just sit there in silence. Like, just think about a nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Play the, I, play the I had a dream speech or some shit, you know? <laughs> like, don't play no fucking play the, music. Play the Michael Jordan goddamn Hall of Fame speech. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I, my, I was just at my uncle's funeral, man, in, in, in Chicago. And um, it was weird at the end. The lady who f the, owned the funeral home kind of got up after people did their eulogies and, and speeches. And she said, all right, everybody, you know, um, I, we're gonna everybody view the body and then you know head to your cars and 
it was the way she said it. She, she basically at the funeral gave a, y'all ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here <laughs> speech. And I think it was a better way to say it. Because first of all, we all dipping. Y'all ain't even got no water in this bitch. We not about to just hang out with a dead body for an hour. <laughs> and so it was just weird how she said it. My cousin was like, I've been kicked out of better funeral homes. <laughs> 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 Funerals is always tricky for me. I can't really do the funeral thing, man. I mean, it's just, I don't know, I'm an emotional person. And then I, the last thing I want to do is, you know, visualize a person dead. That's the last yeah. time you saw him. You know, you just think about that nigga and be like, oh, I saw him dead. You know, so yeah. I, I try not to go. I mean, and sometimes, you know, my mama make me go to some shit. Like, you going to this funeral? And yeah. I'm like, man, I ain't really trying to pull up, though, you know? I, I know, it's not, it's not popping, man. This shit is not the vibe. But, uh... <laughs> 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 but it was just I, I didn't want to I mean, you, you be in there for people but then I did get sad by osmosis and shit cause everybody else was like damn I ain't never seen my like, damn I ain't never seen them like this but it was you know you could be there for people be present I was just you know I just tried to make it I was just saying all types of shit just to try to distract folks before it I was like uh I got dime bags for sale just trying to throw <laughs> Just saying anything just to distract from the death. Like, who got the lean? Like, and I was saying, what's up? Ain't no hoes in here. What's going on? Like, I was <laughs> just saying all types of shit. I was like, distract, distract, distract. Like, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, it's a tough room. Fuck that, man. I don't want them to fucking put me in no motherfucking casket. Dude, don't taxidermy me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have me in the ill pose or some shit doing a Heisman trophy or something. You just yeah, come hell yeah. Look at that shit, you know? Clone me. Five different poses. Have regular me and then a few different outfits. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to just be limited to one. Get some lookalikes, some goddamn mannequins in that bitch and paint them and use the good makeup. <laughs> Hell yeah, I got to write that down because if you don't do it, people just, <laughs> you, you got to make sure your plan is right because if you don't, you let some grieving motherfuckers that's sad plan the whole thing. They need structure. For some reason, I feel like that's bad luck. What? When you like planning what the fuck that gonna happen when you die. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's just like a weird thing to me. I remember one time my fucking business manager hit me up like, you gotta write your will. I'm like, nigga, I'm only 30. What? <laughs> like, why are we planning for this now? You know what I'm saying? Like, but no, so I never wrote no will. I don't give a fuck. I want, I want some drama when I die. Fight over this money, motherfucker. I could dig that too. <laughs> I, I don't dig. want it to go easy. I want it to be some turmoil, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just wanted to be terminal. Also, I want my daughter to just go after anybody that started posting unauthorized footage of me. She got anybody that took weird footage of the shit and they try to post it when I'm, like, I'm sending my daughter after the motherfucker. That's the one instruction she got. That is the weird thing. Like when a motherfucker died and people just start putting, like, that was my nigga right there. And you ain't really fuck with him like that and shit like that. I, that's the one thing I really don't want. You know, I'm a fucking haunt motherfuckers that do that kind of shit, you know? <laughs> Like, we wasn't boys like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you... Kick over their water or some shit. Like, nigga, get up out of here. Yeah, you gotta instruct people. Hey, anybody say some weird shit that don't... Here's... And, and just hack into their account. <laughs> Send a hacker. Yeah. So, so do you have, like, a... Um, like, a song or an album, like, an ex ruin for you or something? Uh... That ruined? Yeah, like I can't hear that shit no more. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> Not ruined, but it just hit differently. Yeah. Uh, pour some sugar on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's like white people strip club music and shit, man. That's like the most, that's like, I swear, because I'm, you know, from the hood, you go to hood strip clubs all the time. It's just like, yeah. back that ass up and shit like that. But the mm -hmm. first time you go to like a white people strip club and the motherfucker here and pour some sugar on me and a bitch shaking ass to that, you're like, oh shit, this shit is getting crazy in here. Yeah. <laughs> like, this shit is wild. Like, I ain't never seen no shit like that, man. It's like one step from the Spice Channel or some yeah. shit, man. <laughs> They'll play anything up in there. They'll play Marilyn Manson up in the white strip club. Yes, it's the dope show. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Boo! <laughs> dope show? Get this shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. If any of y'all motherfuckers been watching the Danny Brown show, you know 
every episode I always have some freestyles on that motherfucker, man. So anybody from the crowd want a freestyle? Let me hear you bust a freestyle. We got no freestylers in the crowd? No freestyles in the crowd? Well, I damn sure ain't doing it, so. Hey, they, they, they calling for you. They calling for me to freestyle? They calling for you. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> he like, that nigga got stone face. Okay. Okay. All right. It's actually my beats. All right. It's my beats. I was excited to hear somebody, and I almost sent my bullshit beats just to uh, have somebody freestyle weird over them and be confused. Like I was gonna send some shit that was like, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> and I said, "Wait, no, this is going on the internet. Let me send my actual shit." Okay, well, drop, well, drop that shit. Which one do you want? Uh, you supposed to just drop that yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we. Yeah. We. Yeah. I said. I said. I said, bitch, where the whip is set? And she said. <laughs> <laughs> Shorty butt naked playing the xylophone in the studio. No, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold up. We ain't got no whippets. We in Creek and Cave just to get it. It's Danny Brown Show, 100 episodes, SU Tune, we got the flow. We on 7th Street in Austin, Texas. Building skyscrapers, motherfuckers keep moving in, raising the prices, and they gone. <laughs> Gotta move out to Round Rock, motherfuckers <laughs> just the found block. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 41 get random back pain. Motherfuckers don't know how to. <laughs> yeah, uh. My daughter Mick, she called me Papa. I said, What type of white people shit is this? I got a ha ha. <laughs> All right, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Cut it. God damn. <laughs> You silly motherfucker, man. Fucking Hannibal, man. Y'all don't know, man. This motherfucker Hannibal, he makes fucking crazy music, man. He's always sending me some shit. I remember one time I was in the airport, and this motherfucker sent me a song, and it was called, I'm in the airport! But was I was at the airport, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, we definitely got to be living in a simulation of some shit, man. This is, this is getting too out of control, man. Hey, man, you just got some time to make shit about what you do, you know? It's as simple as that. I got veneers, made a track about veneers. Mm -hmm. thanks, for the, thanks for the feature on that, man. Yeah, Appreciate that. Yeah, that was fun man. We did the video, man. That was fun, man. Yeah, fun man. Paul Wall, you know? Paul Wall, Danny Brown. You brought up, you brought up the level on the track, because on the original, I was rapping like, you got a chip, you got a gap. You got to get your smile intact. Because I had nobody challenging me on it. And then you got on, and then you sent in your verse. Like 30K up in my mouth. <laughs> now these hoes know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear the light, they twinkle and glisten. <laughs> Hell no, bitch, we ain't kissing. All I want from you is a little dick looking. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Eating on chicken and trying on my rump. <laughs> Teeth fucked up, didn't have no luck. Now I just smile and they want to cuddle up. <laughs> God damn it, Keep a water pick, cuss brushing ain't enough. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I gotta step my shit up. I was like, I, got, I can rap way better than I was rapping. <laughs> yeah, man, thanks for that, Don Veneers. That's the, yeah, that shit goes off crazy live. It's been how, fun. Do you, it makes how do you just come up with the concepts of some shit sometimes? Because you always got some crazy shit, man. Like, what is it, a spark? Because I know, like, you know, writing jokes and shit, and yeah. you know, funny shit happen, you're like, oh, that's a bit, but... Right. What do you see like, oh, this is a song. I can write a song about it's, this. Some of it is from the stand-up. It it'll be things, there's little lines from stand-up that I'll be like, okay, this can kind of be a song. Like Veneers, I had mentioned Veneers in a show once. I said, oh, I got TV teeth, and then kind of threw it away. And I, but I never expanded on it. And so then one day I was kind of just, 
I was online and I saw somebody else talking about they had hair plugs or something. They were like, look, <laughs> I actually got hair plugs. And I saw, started thinking about what do I have that I don't talk about like that. And so, so I was just like, oh, veneers. Nobody really talk about veneers in a musical way, you know? And so I was like, it's a funny thing. And then veneers kind of apply to a bunch of shit, whatever we use to cover up insecurities or anything. So I just made the veneers track, you know? And then and then did it at uh at Bruiser Thanksgiving. That was 2021. Yeah. And that shit went crazy there, man. Just for for a song that nobody knew. Y'all was up there hyping. That shit was fun. I, after that show, I was like, whoa, that was exciting. <laughs> this rap shit is this shit is crazy, god damn it. And so yeah, that one is just, you know, or oh, I just hear a phrase. And then like, I Live Weights was, I heard. Uh, Come on, I we can't give, don't get, give oh, too sorry, much sorry, 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 A different that's, concept. That's right. a, one Three Pocket is about, bo I like bowling. Oh, yeah. And so I just, uh, you know, I was freestyling one time and I was like, hit the One Three Pocket and the shit lately. And so it was like, oh, you know, I played that for somebody and they were like, you need to, Expand on that. Tony Tramp said, is, is stay on that bowling shit. So I took, I sampled myself from a freestyle and then made one three pocket from there and just like, really, I enjoy bowling. And so, it was yeah, like, that is the crazy. You do. You, I, I remember you was in the celebrity bowling tournament yeah, shit. That shit was bowling. on TV. I was like, what the fuck is this nigga Hannibal doing? <laughs> He's fucking bowling against Chris Paul and shit. I'm like, that what the fuck fun, is going man. on, man? <laughs> that shit is really fun because it's a different type of bowling when they put the crowd on a couple. You got the crowd over here. The energy over there was was uh, was wild, man. I want to, you know, here's one of my, my weird plans, but I got to figure out where it fits into my life. You know, since colleges got the NIL thing, right? Yeah. It, I kind of. You know, I didn't play sports in college, so I got four years of eligibility. I was thinking about going back to college and then getting on the bowling team. And then, <laughs> and then getting in NIL money. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I think I was like, oh, I was, I was kind of looking at which colleges, because I'm about to move back to New York. I'm like, which colleges in New York got a bowling team? Hmm. And then it was like a lot of them, and I don't want to live in Schenectady or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's spin the motherfucking wheel. Spin the wheel! <laughs> Sex Kung Fu? Is that like she karate? <laughs> Sex Kung Fu? I don't know if it's just like, you know, just do some extra shit right before. Uh, I don't know. Hey, uh, that's... Uh, that's a new term for me. I'm not really versed. That's like some Gen Z shit or something, man. That's, I don't know, man. Uh, uh, maybe you just do the, you just say, you know, hey, we about to fuck. You ready, for, you ready for it? Or you just do bad dubbing? No, 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 no. I'm about to ravish you. Like, just do real, like every motion is really crisp. Yeah, come here. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is crazy though. How um, kung fu movies was like a big thing when we were growing up, and it's just like not a thing now. Like, what what happened where kung fu movies aren't like just like the cool shit? I guess you consider like shit like John Wick yeah. or something like kung fu movie. But I'm talking about it was like real deal. Like motherfuckers go like we used to have a um, movie theater downtown Detroit. And you could go every day for a dollar. Mm. Damn, I'm old. You go for a dollar, you go see a movie for a dollar, and it'll, it'll just play like old kung fu movies and shit. And that shit used to be lit. Motherfuckers used to be fighting in there and shit, too. I guess that's why yeah. I stopped. <laughs> Motherfuckers start watching kung fu movies, they get excited. Like, I want to try that shit out. Hold up, nigga. <laughs> I'm the crane. Yeah, they did used to be fighting that motherfucker, too, man. So maybe that was a thing. Yeah, it's all, I think it's, yeah. I don't know what it is. They don't have a champion. They just need one person. To get behind it and put money behind it, anything be going with with somebody that's interesting. That's why marble races are online. <laughs> yeah, because it's a couple motherfuckers like this is what it is. I didn't even know that shit existed. And we like gonna a, make it happen no matter what. To a few months ago, I just found out about that shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, man? Yeah, man, it just take one person <laughs> with some money or friends with money to like convince them like this is what we doing. Yeah, man. Yeah, we doing that. That's 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 what that's what, that's what the hell we doing right now. God damn it. That's what we doing. It's white people shit, man. That's all. All right. Um. So yeah, we about to um get ready to get up out of here in a minute, man. I just want to thank you guys so much for coming through, man. Thank you, Hannibal. Yeah. It's a fun time. For coming through. Yeah. But 
Before we leave, we got a real special treat for you guys. Um, we about to um, premiere Hannibal new music video, man. Yeah, new music video. Um, I lift weights, so. I lift weights. Can you tell us about how this whole thing came about? The song I lift weights uh, <laughs> is, uh, I was watching one of those NFL videos, the, the, the mic'd up videos, and it was, it was where they talking shit, and it's, it's, it was a clip from, uh, it was one player, Joe Hayden, and it was, he was just like, I lift weights! And it was just something about how he said it, just, it just caught my ear, and I, said, I told my engineer, I was like, clip that, we're gonna use it for something. <laughs> I don't know what. And so then, had a session maybe a couple days later, and then we just wanted to do something easy just to get shit going. So it was like, pull that I lift weight shit, we'll make something around that. And then, just really started producing around it too, and you know, just adding stuff to the song, because I was like, oh, it's gonna be a funny song, but I want the music on it to be so high level and to have changes, and we added in a sample from this one cat, David Trask, and you know, ended up, you know, we had another track that we sampled, we was like, fuck it, we don't wanna pay them, so let's get a choir instead. <laughs> we don't wanna get them 20% of the songs just cause of that, let's see if we can beat that, and so just kept on adding stuff, put my homie DJ Williams on guitar, and just brought the song together, man, and, and wanted to shoot a video. My, my assistant, had, when we were shooting some stuff for it, she, she got me one of these muscle suits. And so I was just shooting stuff, popping up on people in a muscle suit. Uh, and just, and then we shot, shot some last year, kind of fell off track with it because I started touring and then started working with a new production team this year to get some more scenes. They added more to the story and, and created a, a narrative around it. And now it's, uh, we got a full video, man. I'm hyped about it. We're about to probably drop it. I mean, it'll, it's out now. I don't know how to word this because this is going to be yeah, out late. Yeah, yeah. And the video's coming out. It's out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know. But uh, it's, uh, it's an exciting video, man. I've been, you know, we're still tweaking it right now. It's almost in this. It's about probably 90, 93% there, a couple tweaks. But uh, a lot of people worked on the, on the music and a lot of people worked on the visual to, to help it come together. So uh, I'm hyped to show it to y'all. Y'all the first. You know, people in, in, you know, outside of my friends to see it right now. Uh, it's got a lot of energy. I'm proud. Of, I'm proud of it. So, yeah. All right. So here we go. We ask you tune. Our top three this no, is that life is a dream. Everybody else here threw up for me. Maximize. I want to be serious for a second. Maximize. I, I call Expand. Maximize. Yeah, Maximize. People are looking terrible Full in screen. these streets. Y'all look real weak and flimsy screen. out here. Drag, I see you at the grocery store corner. struggling with stuff that's... Press pl plus. Sorry, one second. Big square. Oh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> plus sign. Expand, drag. Technical lower, difficulty. Lower right corner, drag to this corner. Plus sign. Green, expand, big square. <laughs> drag. Expand, plus. Is the file I sent that small, or what happened? I knew something was up. <laughs> is it my fault? I'm willing to be open to the it, to that. It to is that. a small file, and there we oh, go. Okay. <laughs> Your boy Annie's always ready. Let's get it, baby. Threw up for me. Time. I want to be serious for a second. I right, I'll call you back. And there it was. People are looking terrible in these streets. Y'all look real weak and flimsy out here. I see you at the grocery store struggling with stuff that should not require a struggle. A six pack of canned Sprite, you should be ashamed of yourself. I saw a man break his wrist on the push side of the door at Taco Bell. I ask you to join me on this journey. We need more weight lifters. Where are our heroes? Our heads are bigger than our chests. Hear me now, people of Los Angeles. Metropolitan area, surrounding cities, even you, Downey. Where are our heroes? Heroes. It's time. I live. Wait. I live. I live. I live. I live. Wait. I live. I live. Wait. 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 I live waste, do it every day. Build up, double up the. I live waste, I live waste, I live waste. I live waste, I live waste. 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 I live waste
lift weights. 20 sets, 10. Double up the reps. Then I go again. I lift weights. It's my damn life. I lift weights. Do it every night. Do it every day. Protein shakes. Pre-workout. I don't really play. Every day I lift. Every day I lift. I'm just addicted. I just do this shit. I lift weights. I stay strong. Creatine shakes. Yeah, that's what I'm on. Creatine life. Lifting all the weights. Double up the weight. Yeah, yeah, weight. I lift weights. Yeah, I'm just strong. It seems that amateur bowler Hannibal Burns has really gotten into weightlifting. He's been running around the streets of Los Angeles, hounding people to lift five pound weights. I mean, I'm thrilled nonetheless, but it's like, Hannibal? Burns, the bowler? Like, why him? You know what I'm saying? Who who died and made you Arnold Schwarzenegger? Arnold Schwarzenegger's still here. Why is his last name Nigger? I live weights. Okay, Hannibal, he's looking great. I think he's been lifting weights or something. Good for him. You sure? You seem like you didn't mean that at all. If that's his journey, then blessings be to him. Blessings be to him. It's just he, he was always such a cardio guy, so this is a dramatic turn. You think he's on steroids? No, no. No. Hannibal would never juice. That's all natural. Okay. He did used to take a lot of these one day trips to Mexico. Well, you know what you gotta do. I live weights. This how I'm be. Know who I am, know what I see. Biceps, triceps, that's just my life. I just live weights every day of night. I live weights. I don't sleep. Yeah, I rest, but it's just for me. Well, I rest, but I don't sleep. But I sleep sometimes, but I don't sleep. I live weights. Then I just stop. Then I never stop. Then I just stole, with no waste. Then I just get, got this, yeah, that's what I live. I live waste, you don't live waste, you should live waste. I live waste, not giving advice, but maybe you should. Look at me, look, everything's good. I live waste, I keep going, with no waste. That's how they going, that's why the flow's so strong. That was SU Tune. Yeah, man. I live weights. Thank you guys so much Good for show. coming out. This was so fucking hey. fun, man. Thank you, Hannibal. Thank man. you, man. Congrats on 100 episodes. Danny Brown Show. Austin, what up? Yeah. <laughs>